All right, let's try this again. All right, hello, I'm Mac the Maker, and tonight we're going to be uh, doing a quick review and assembly of this guy here. Let me see if I can... Um, this is 3D Wargaming's current Kickstarter for 28mm Warplanes. Um, he was gracious enough to send me a demo file of the A6M20 here. Um, he has a very interesting model for his Kickstarter, one that uh, as a content creator and seller of 3D printed goodies, um, I kind of admire and uh, kind of wish I thought of myself. Um, you buy the STLs from them in the Kickstarter, but you don't get all the parts. Um, you do have to buy, in this case, I believe it's the cowl and the tail cone uh, for the rear of the fuselage from him. So in the various um, Kickstarter reward packages here, um, you can get a single plane or multiple planes and uh, the requisite parts for uh, completing um, the plane. So in this case, you do the $75 Canadian, which you know, it's probably like $50 or $60, oh, $57 American. Um, you get the three warplanes of your choice, a V-2 rocket, V-1 flying bomb, and all the parts that get shipped to you. Um, I realize from a lot of uh, STL Kickstarters, it's a huge change and one that a lot of people might not like. However, um, you can ask a lot of uh, the, the Kickstarter uh, creators out there uh, what happens to their STL files as soon as they're released. Um, I know WoW Buildings has had a real problem with uh, people uh, just uploading his files to, I actually have no idea where, but uh, uploading them somewhere where people can download them for free and imprint them uh, as many as they want. And uh, for a content creator, that's not only discouraging, but that's taking money out of your pocket. Um, you know, piracy is not a victimless, victimless crime, etc. except instead of Hollywood Studios, you know, these are individual 3D artists or, or maybe a couple 3D artists um, that put a lot of love and passion in their products just to have uh, people steal them. And I can go on and on for hours about uh, what Thingiverse has done for the 3D modeling community and what started out as an incredibly beneficial tool has turned into a use. Uh, but that'll be a web log for another day. So this came in... Six major parts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. Um, you can see the propeller, I didn't turn on supports, so the back of the propeller is uh, not great. Uh, that's all right, though. I can either reprint it or maybe even just laser cut acrylic, a clear acrylic disc um, and glue on the, the back of the uh, propeller cone there. Um, I printed this at 0.12 uh, millimeter layer lines. Uh, I typically print at 0.28, so uh, this is much nicer quality than I normally print at. Um, this is on one of my CR-10s, and uh, came out really nicely. We've got a little bit of um, layer striations there that are noticeable on the cockpit glass. Uh, we'll see what it looks like after a couple coats of filler primer. 3D Wargaming really knows what they're doing from a modeling and... Uh, FDM printing standpoint. It would help if I turn back this guy. There we go. Um, there's the lines on the cockpit that you can see. Um, they really know what they're doing. Everything comes to you in a file format that's ready to print. You just load the file into your slicer and it's ready to go. Um, I actually didn't use any brims on the wings or the tail planes. I debated about it because they're fairly thin and I might have even gotten a little bit of warpage uh, on there. We'll see that might be that might be intentional uh, in the design. Um, but yeah, everything's broken down logically, nicely. Um, would have been nice maybe to have some different, maybe some positive pins or something for um, part connection, but it's, it's no big deal.
and see the snow lines. Now this isn't my normal, I uh, use Simplify 3D, this isn't my normal Simplify 3D profile. A pretty nasty virus and had to wipe my uh, modeling printing computer back to bare metal. Uh, my files are kept all offline, so that wasn't an issue except for my profiles, which I never really thought about. Those were stored live on the machine, and I now have to recreate them from uh, the Chris Elkins CO10 profile. So we've got a little bit of, looks like some speed vibrations in there, some echoes. Um, nothing to do with the model here. This is just my profile. And again, everything is nice and flat. Um, so a coat of, I forget this is backwards here, perfect plastic putty, um, some filler sander, and uh, filler primer, I mean, and some light sanding, and you're going to be good to go. The panel lines are nice and deep here. Let's see what I my knife, you know, so some filling and stuff, you're not going to worry about that. This was a scale model, they'd be trenches, but, uh, you know, these are designed for organic use. So I'm going to go ahead and kick my cat off the chair there. And ship my, right. And my, my glue palette, my trusty Extreme Power Super Glue. And a toothpick. And I'm going to go ahead and just looking at this logically, I think I'm going to put the tail end of the fuselage on first, and then the wings, the tail, and the cones. Um, and like I said, I don't have the cowl. He did not send that to me, so we won't be able to, to completely finish it. Um, and then I'll paint it off screen and go from there. So I'll go ahead and score this joint up a little bit. Actually the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm make sure it's nice and level. Nice even pressure. You know, it looks like I had some very slight ridging on the edges. And while I'm here, before I glue, I'm going to do the, the wing loops. dust all over my laptop. So yeah, since my modeling computer was wiped and using my laptop, which works okay, but now I've got three separate computers trying to do the job of one. Yeah, we don't have the cowl, but I'll go ahead and Sure how the cowl mount. I'm assuming it's a solid piece, so that should be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and spool that here. Look at the tail here, and you can see. This joint here is where uh, the tail cone should be. Let's see if I can scroll up so you can kind of see. Right under there, I think there's another picture that shows the... Uh, doing this he's got a lot of really excellent stretch goals I mean that B29 whoo. Uh, 
Ground Zero Typhoon, Stutka, yeah, I mean, that's 30 inches wingspan, B-17, 22 inches, I mean, I want both of them, so. And then he had a very successful uh, tank one, I believe, last year that uh, I'm really upset I missed out on. Likewise, well designed. Everything was was designed to uh, FDM print and scales pretty well. Uh, it's kind of uh, the pledging and stuff. I'll be doing the commercial use, which is the 50 models of your choice. Uh, pretty big investment for me, but I think uh, I think it's well worth it. So. Let's just do this so I'm gonna scroll back up to here. A couple of my very good friends are scale modeling enthusiasts, and my one friend Chris uh, went ahead and figured out the exact ratio of Tamiya paints I need to make a factory fresh uh, Nakajima zero. Zero built by Nakajima. Uh, so I'll be painting that with that primarily because I have the Tommy paints and stuff. Nice rough surface there. And score. Try not to grab your hands. And this is a big enough surface so I can go out and apply directly to. <laughs> not the world's biggest fan of kicker. The smell kind of makes me sick these days, but. Should we get this up? I'm just going to add bubble apparently. There I don't typically like to oh the wait a minute again. Not a good kind of spraying it. So I typically just what that mythical capillary action draw then. And just for scale here, here's a, one of my semi-completed uh, Warlord Games American Bolt Action guys. Scale-wise, looks right to me. I'm going to assume that it is uh, correct. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. Sandpaper back here. You can see here the the gear door details in there, and then the it's a 7.7 millimeter wing gun hole there. It looks like there may have been some warpage here at the very front. I hate printing with brims, but for the wings and the tails, it might uh, it might be necessary. One more time here. I'm going to 
to make sure he's doing that with a even pressure. Don't want to warp it any further than it already is. Might be only like a figure eight or circle pattern. Used to do this to one more engine heads. Test on the sandpaper. And Yeah, it looks pretty. Make this focus any better. Pretty even there. You may have to trust me on that. Might as well do. The rest of the tail comes and stuff. So it's a little more. Looks like that is a little bit of warp there. I didn't see um, that would be nice that maybe a message and we might talk about it but some sort of hole here or something for a stand to mount in a flying stand or something like that I know there's uh, ones with the landing gear already down but uh, you don't want to mount this somehow flying so and I don't think it's going to be in the, the cowl or that tailpiece so Sam people back out of the way here. Like I said, as that model goes, I know it's not for everybody, and some people are going to be really disappointed that they still have to buy, you know, parts to finish their model from, you know, the, the designer and stuff. But uh, to really get blockchain going at a, a small enough service here, you know, individual 3D printers and that sort of thing. Um, so far, I've seen it's probably the best way to ensure that uh, even if your files do get widely distributed, you're still going to be somehow compensated for them. Obviously, these parts can be reverse engineered and all that sort of thing. But uh, you know, as, things, as these things go, you know, I'm a content provider too. There's a reason all my movement trays aren't not selling the files for those. Because the instant I do, they're going to be on Reddit or 4chan or whatever. Gonna, well, I didn't spoil this, but it's all right. It's going to be tech in here. Concentration. And yeah, I could have pinned this, built some holes and some wire and whatnot, but I think once you get this on a stand, you'll be all right. Or maybe use a dollop of some five minute epoxy or have you there. Let me go ahead and put the tail plane on. Now this is a little more difficult because I don't have that tail cone piece. I don't 
think putting this on will get in the way of, of putting that tail cone on uh, after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and get my Sally Beauty Supply sanding stick here. That was 99 cents. I'm going to use the side that doesn't have caked on plunk. No, that held up pretty well. if there's only a different smoke. Nope. Right. Could have probably printed this in a better color than black if I was filming it. It was printed in Finland. They keep changing it now. I don't know if they've gone back to just inland PLA. For a while, it was their premium PLA. Um, PL, inland Black. It's my favorite. It's all I ever use. I probably go through like 15 years a month. 215 degrees on a 65 and then 60 degree build plate. reasons I don't tend to like kicker besides the the smell hurts my throat after a while is it makes a super glue a little brittle or a lot brittle and whereas if it dries naturally it does usually have a little bit of give in it but I would also like to finish this in a timely fashion. Upside down, shall we? And one nice thing about the striations is they do kind of help with the, the blooming. This be nice for some positive pins or blocks or what have you to to mount these guys on. So then you get into all the fun variables of individual FDM printers with the inner diameter hole. Typically clearancing them a four tenths of a millimeter larger in each axis works. Uh, to make it the correct diameter that you're looking for even a little bit larger. But that's not always the case. Works Ultimakers are, I think, 0.5 or 0.6, because they print, one of them prints with a 0.6 nozzle, one prints with a 0.4. So, a lot of people printing these files are not what I would call experts, so they may not know what nozzle they have, etc. So yes, typically everybody, every printer comes stock with 0.4, but I remember my CR10 came with a 0.4 on the machine and then like a 0.5 as the backup nozzle, which never made any sense to me. So if that's still something they do, I can see people putting that nozzle on and not realizing what the heck is going on. Okay. 
Oh, hey, look. I don't have to work tomorrow. I'm in the middle of a potential blizzard right now in northern Illinois. So, yeah, it's a paid day off. Too much, so I'm gonna have some extra sanding to do. So, here is my kicker. He's in that way. No, I just have to. You can get it aligned in the time that it takes to harden it. Yeah, we did. Let me just, okay. Alright, and then the tail. This one should be a little bit easier. Yeah, I would say go ahead and print these with a brim next time. So I'm not a big fan of them either, but really small pieces, they definitely probably. My basement's also very cold, and while I try to keep uh, the printer area warmer, uh, there is some drafts and stuff in there too, so that may account for some of my workage. I'm old school glue stick kind of guy. I usually get everything trammed level, whichever term you prefer, uh, to where I don't need it, but I print enough and you know the stuff's going out for sale that uh, the glue stick is just a, a nice little piece of insurance. Um, make sure everything sticks down and everything like that. So, but I need small pieces sometimes, especially with the graphic basement. It is not perfect. So here we go. Here's our, I got the, the drop tank to put together, but uh, I'll put it together, but I don't think I'm going to mount the plane until I figure out uh, like a flying stand for it. A little, I could use my GW base that I have um, on my Etsy store, etsy.com slash Um But I feel that might be a little bit overkill for something of this size. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Like I said, there's a, a couple spots where you might need some sort of pins or whatever. I understand that that would make uh, printing a little more difficult. You know, you wouldn't be able to necessarily uh, print the wings down unless maybe you just left them holes and then uh, separate pins that you mounted. I don't know. This is probably fine. Just got to spend a couple extra minutes making sure uh, everything's aligned and ready and these are picker ready. So then, like I said, I'll probably just cut out the uh, acrylic disc to whatever diameter this is and, and paint the edge of it yellow so it looks like it's flying since there's no landing gear and it's going to look like it's flying. So I'll go ahead and do it. Do the tank here because we'll have to paint it. Quick little build, probably if I wasn't talking and all that kind of stuff. But it's been about 10 minutes or so. Now everybody's texting from work about no working tomorrow. I should probably message my staff here when I'm done. We have 12 hours, so I think I have plenty of time. All right. Let's get it. We're going to work tomorrow. 
Right. Now for the fun part. Now I've done a video on perfect plastic putty. It's actually probably one of my best seen videos, which at 40 views is not selling very much, but uh, that's okay. It's a perfect plastic putty. I remember this in backwards. Um, Deluxe Materials makes it. It's on Amazon. If you look in my videos, there's a Max Hacks, which is covered in perfect plastic putty. Um, it is the same as the Vallejo putty in function. I don't know if it's the same in uh, manufacturer, but um, well, right here, let, me, let me just take a minute to let everybody know that we are post tomorrow. To do. Yeah, I'll take care of mine. There we go. So, anyways, apologize for that. Uh, it's water soluble putty, uh, which means two things. I'm just getting a little dry here because I haven't used it. Um, you can mix it with water to make it a little more soupy, which I do. You'll see that here in a second. And after it's dried, you can take a wet cotton bud and it wipes right off. If you're doing large flat areas, it may not be the, um, the best choice for that. But what it was for designed for is wing roots here because it's really hard to sand. The wet cotton bud fits in there just perfect. So I'm going to take some of my wonderfully pure municipal water here. And usually I have a pipe that I have to go take You don't know what want. And I'm just going to get it. My chunky salsa tin. to fix also. Yeah. So usually I try to get a little smaller than that. Lop it in there. This stuff is amazing. Scale model, model railroading, and most importantly, 3D printing. I don't know if they capitalized on that, uh, but it's a little pricier compared to like wood putty or whatever a lot of the three modelers like to use. Man, that is a lot of sanding. I don't got time for that much sanding. And then the cotton bud. Now you can do the same thing with like Tamiya Ultra Fine or Bondo Spot Putty and Micro Thinner. Uh, I don't really like how Micro Thinner smells. I don't really like what it does to my body when I'm not wearing a respirator. So I like to use the plastic putty and stuff. Now if I'm doing big areas, Flat areas, uh, my giant, my mech scale, which is a whatever 12 inch diameter ball, uh, Union drop ship. The vast majority of that was done with the Bondo spot putty just because of the size. 
Um, but my 28 millimeter Battletech Warhammer that I did for Gen Con, uh, which is on my Facebook and Instagram. Facebook is Facebook at Mac the Maker, M A C K. Uh, Instagram is M A K the Maker. Um, you can see them there. That was all done with perfect plastic blade. And that the Warhammer, which if you do Macross is a Tomahawk, uh, was all done on my CR 10. The Marauder that's on there was printed on the phone too. And I have no idea how much that cost me, and I don't want to know. But I got to keep it, so it was for the Catalyst Game Labs booth. Um, so that was pretty cool. So we have one done. And as this dries, not infinitely, but a few times, you can add some water to it and then drop your model and break it and kind of reactivate it. Let me go ahead and use this, whatever it is, coffee stirring stick on this other one joint. No, I won't. Are you doing the whole model like this? But I do kind of want to show you with a plastic putty at every opportunity. If you like these sort of tips and tricks, I do try to semi regularly update my uh, Max Hacks series, <clears throat> which the uh, next one will be. Um, assembling a 3D model using super glue, so kind of like what we just did here. Um, that's really exactly what we just did here. So I might do something else. Um, but I've done the ones on the perfect plastic putty, DOS modeling clay, which is a great uh, terrain tool material. Um, there's a couple of tricks to get around the shrinkage that uh, air drying clay is rightfully known for. Um, but once you get past that and you fix that issue, it becomes an incredibly cheap and effective terrain tool. It's like 10 bucks for two pounds. Can't be beat. All right, so now, see that gap? There's a little more filled. That panel line on the side isn't, I think it's just more, it's just the white contrasting because there's not really anything in there. I'm just going to double check that. Uh, I do keep some of the uh, expensive Tamiya like cone shaped. Uh, cotton buds for really tight areas, but I didn't pull them out for this. So I'm not going to be digging around in my cabinet right for that. So, okay, we're back. As I mentioned, I really hate open broadcast software. I don't know if it's a laptop or. OBS, or me, could be all three, causing me nothing but issues today. So I'm just going to go, this is going to be a little more tricky because you got the landing gear outline, the doors, so I'm going to stick my big head in here. Luckily, these panel lines are big enough and thick enough that rescribing them really wouldn't be an issue for even a complete novice. And when it comes to scribing panel lines, that's a pretty good description of me. I don't like it. Well, now I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, now that's got to be... Well, 
And those are supposed to be kind of long, so not even know. Filling them for speed. Which apparently is what they did to the P-51. They fill in all the panel lines with caulk. So it go faster. Not seeing any evidence of that, but then again, I guess I don't know what it would look like in a picture. But it means all of your dedication to accurate panel lines is probably wasted. And very obviously not with a counter. Uh, sure. See, the other thing is, as it dries, it does sometimes have a tendency to shrink, so you may have to come over it uh, a second time. But that's no different than, like, uh, Tommy X Refine. Well, it is, because Tommy X Refine shrinks over time, so you'll think your putty's dry and you'll paint your, your masterpiece, and then three weeks later, wonder why all your joints are starting to show again. Well, at least this has the uh, politeness to do it as you kind of watch. So I'm not going to sit. I'm not going to bore you with the uh, filling up of all the, all the joints here. But uh, over the next couple days, um, uh, my Facebook and Instagram, and I think I can actually post updates to ins uh, YouTube itself now. Um, that you'll see if you're a subscriber, um, the painting process here. Um, it's an early Warbird, the 6M2, um, so I'll probably try to paint it as one of the Pearl Harbor uh, zeros, the green with uh, yellow, or um, sorry, the, the gray, the whitish gray um, with the yellow uh, tailplane. Whatever. I'll post a reference picture and go from there. Um, and then we'll kind of worry about that, uh, that little striations on my cockpit glass there. Um, those panels are big enough that I might try jeweling them. We'll see. Never done anything that long, so the lighting could get kind of interesting. Um, but yeah. So, go back to the window capture here. So it is the, this was the AM60 from 3D Wargaming's currently running 28 millimeter Warplane Kickstarter. Uh, basic pledge to get anything is uh, 30 Canadian, so 23 American. Um, two planes, your choice. Um, and then again, the difference between this and other um, STL file kickstarters is you do have to get the remaining parts from uh, 3D Wargaming, I'm assuming. Um, he'll ship them out to you. Uh, you know, with, with your pledge here, and I guess in the future, if you wanted to print more than what your Kickstarter got, um, he does have a website where he sells files too. So my assumption is at a later point, these will all be available to, to purchases. So, a license basically to print one plane and he'll ship you the whatever parts your particular plane um, requires to finish printing. Um, not for everybody. I like it. I think it's a creative solution to a huge problem with um, STL files. Um, so until we get blockchain or something else that will guarantee that a, a file is, is only printed once or used within the terms of the license and not shared all willy-nilly on the internet. Um, he's got 18 days to go, so um, I think it's a creative solution. I think it's a useful model set. You know, it's not another set of uh, D-Day buildings, which, hey, you can never have too many D-Day buildings, but uh, kind of like Primaris Lieutenants, the market's a bit saturated right now with them, so let's scroll all the way down here and I'm going to show the, the pledge list here. I said I'll probably be doing the commercial use 450 Canadian, which whatever is probably like 
375 American um, to sell 50 models. Um, uh, hopefully by then my my non Etsy store at shop.macromaker is done. Tired of paying Etsy, it's exorbitant fees. So yeah, this is probably the same color scheme I'm gonna be doing mine as. We'll see, I might do a green one. And Storm of Vec is pretty, or Storm of Vec, uh, Stutka is pretty nice looking too. I like the one in here. Me too. Ooh. Jesus. I forgot about that. He had told me about that. Carl Barat. The future Kickstarter. But yeah. They obviously know what they're doing when it comes to 3D modeling, especially for FDM printers. And the other nice thing is if you do have one of the small DLP printers, D7, any cubic photon, frozen make, the new um, Prusa SL1 or whatever they are, um, with that kind of three inch by two inch build area. I think they're six inch tall. I had a photon, I should know. Um, all these parts look like they'll print just fine in there too. So, um, you know, if you're willing to pay for the resin, uh, you won't have to slice them up in mesh mix or anything, or you may want to hollow them out. Um, and these would all look like they print in those just fine. So that's a, another avenue for you if you like to burn through resin. Um, in fact, I may do this and see if I can do this on the form too, see if it clears, see what that looks like. I got money to burn, right? Well, thank you for watching. If you like this, you know, let me know. Hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. I'll, I'll check them. Um, Facebook and Instagram is where I'm far more active, probably more so on Instagram. Um, M-A-K, the maker. Somebody else is Mac the maker on Instagram. I'm going to post and I can't get a screen name, but whatever. I'm not better. Uh, yeah, so have a great Sunday night. If it's snowing by you, stay safe. If it's 65 degrees and beautiful, I hate you. And uh, have a good night.